And we've got to that point when we usher in our first guest, Inibe Hefyong, as a human rights and public interest lawyer and principal counsel at Inibe Hefyong Chambers. He's here to th throw a bit more light on the oft-used and time-worn concept of conflict of interest. As in knuckles as, it's, as it sounds, that term has in the past week or thereabouts assumed an added dimension in the wake of the controversy trailing the mishandling of public funds by some functionaries of the Tinubu administration. Good morning, Barista Nive. Good, Good morning. to have you. Good to be here. Good to, to and, see you. And happy New Year to you. Thank you. Thank you. Good to see you. All right. Conflicts of interest. Is it only lawyers that will be able to assist Nigerians in this matter? Because we've been reading so much, we've been hearing different parties as far as the issue uh, affecting the Ministry of um, Humanitarian Affairs is concerned. And of course, the ancillary component of it where another serving minister, uh, the Minister of Interior, uh, is said that a company where is a shareholder, even though he has resigned as a director and founder, um, is benefiting from contract awards from the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. And people are saying that this is not just a legal issue, it's also a moral issue. We know that the president has invited that gentleman, um, and all we have heard so far is that all is good. It's all good. That's what we have heard from him. Conflict of interest. By your reading of what is going on, as the Minister of Interior erred in any way, Again, thank you for having me. Um, it, it is not a very simplistic matter. Mm. It is not one for which a simple yes or no uh, uh, can explain. One would have to examine it in great detail. One will have to look at it from different uh, spectrum. Uh, the, the starting point for me is to see that if you look at uh, paragraph one of the fifth schedule to the 1999 constitution, it states that a public officer shall not put himself in a position where his personal interest conflicts with his duties and responsibilities. That is the constitutional foundation yeah. for the principle of conflict of interest in our country. Now, you have a situation where um, the, the Minister of Interior uh, is said to have uh, a company that he has interest, yes. significant interest. <laughs> right, mm. is a beneficiary of contract award by uh, the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs. Uh, so the, the question you would want to ask is, was this contract advertised? Mm. Did it go through the procurement process? Is, was it in compliance with the Procurement Act? Mm. How did this come about? What were the requirements for the award of this contract? Yeah. If you have a contract that is close to almost half a billion, half a billion. that is not a joke. And the company in question is not a public company. It's not listed. It's not a, a public, it's not a trade, it's not a company that is on, that you can just go and buy shares from. Yeah. It is a private company limited by shares. So again, that is why I said these issues have to be, mm -hmm. Examine carefully. Because if it is a private company limited by shares, it is corporate law 101. It simply tells you that the controlling minds of the company, the owners of the company, is, is quite limited. You could have, in fact, under the current law, you can even have one person, right, as a, as a, as a director of a company. So if you look at the ownership of this company, you would want to ask yourself genuinely, can anybody convince me today that this company has not enjoyed the patronage of the government on account, on account mm. of the influence, on account of the position and status mm. of the minister who is the owner of the company. Because if you say the advisor and the director, mm. right, it is the shareholder that own a company. Correct. That point should be stated clearly. The company belongs to the shareholders. Right? They are the ones who own the company. Yeah. Directors are people who basically run the company, but in terms of ownership, Yes. Right? Because if, at the end of the day, dividends, I mean, it goes to the shareholders. The shareholders who merit or earn dividends of a company. Yes. So I, I, I find his explanation 
um, unsatisfactory. And, and I think that at the heart of this is even the question of this so-called social investment program yeah. or whatever that you know, name the government has given to it. They claim that you know, the government says, oh, uh, we have a school feeding pro you know, program, which is a, a part of it. Yeah. We, we have the conditional cash, cash transfer. transfer, right? And then you, you ask yourself, uh, and then the end power. These projects or social intervention projects, programs, have been plagued by grave allegations of corruption over the years from the Buari dispensation that have never, never, the government has never made an attempt to properly investigate it. Because except you look at the root of it, yeah. you will not know why we get to where we are currently. Now, when the minister says that he had divested himself from the company, that he had resigned as a director, of course you cannot be a director while still serving as a minister. That would itself be a direct contravention of the Code of Conduct Bureau and Tribunals Act, of the provisions of, uh, you know, uh, the, the fifth schedule to the constitution. So you, are, you cannot be earning double emolument. That is why you had to resign. But that doesn't mean that you don't have an interest in the company. And let us not kid ourselves. We know how these things happen in real life, mm. right? Even public officers who engage in money laundering, and I'm speaking generally, politicians and public officers who indulge in money laundering and corruption, they don't simply go to the vaults, right? Or the, the treasury and take the money out. They do it through proxies. Yeah. They do it through you know pseudo entities. Yeah. They use companies that they have interest or that their proxies are controlling. And we know that the real awards of contract is not in the in fact even when they advertise the real decision to award a contract. Sometimes those conversations take place behind the scene. Mm. So I as a Nigerian cannot sit here and say that this company ended this contract solely on its own accord without the the possible influence and reference to the minister who has interest in it. But let us go beyond that. We have a situation where the, and, and really, I don't understand why they said the, the president has invited him. Was it for a coffee break? Was it for a tea? What did the president invite him for? Why was it not the FCC that invited him? Right? I commend the Minister of Interior, you know, for the reform he has tried to introduce yeah. in, the, you know, in his ministry. Yeah. In terms of the ability of Nigerians to get passports, he has really done, I mean, one can concede to him. He has done well. He has done well. To be the shining star yes. of the, of the cabinet. <laughs> Which is why this is worrisome. Mm -hmm. So if he, with the track record he has tried, with, with, with the direction he has tried to take mm. in his ministry, is imagine this scandal. How about the ones we've not heard of? Mm. So I want the president to go beyond this window dressing. Let us have an audit. Let the, if the president is serious about investigating this conflict of interest or investigating the corruption allegation yeah. that has trailed the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, I'm challenging the president today to not just say EFCC should investigate the specifics, allegations that are made against Beta Edu, Right? Mm. The suspended minister. Let us have a review of the entire national invest, you know, social investment pro projects. Let us begin to ask the question, who are the beneficiaries of the NPOWER? How come there are a country in 2024? Mm. I cannot go on the internet with all the money. Look at, they claim they spend almost half a billion for consultancy. What were they consulting for? <laughs> what, was the con what, is the con what is the services that, that was rendered that you spend that amount of money? How come that as a country in the 21st century, I cannot simply stay in the comfort of my home and Google and go on the internet to see who the beneficiaries of the NPOWER are, to see who the beneficiaries of the conditional cash transfer are. The the information is not there. The vulnerable, and many of them do who not are have there? bank accounts. Who are there? Who are they? Who are there? <laughs> so this, this so-called social investment, and I don't, I don't like the idea of saying it has been suspended for six weeks. Mm. The entire program should be scrapped before we can even reconsider whether it should be sustained or not. Let it be scrapped in the interim. Until the president of Nigeria today, Tunubu, is able to tell Nigerians that these are the beneficiaries of the of these social investment interventions mm. over the years, and it shouldn't be limited to his government from the Buhari dispensation. Yeah. But you see, let us be honest. Tunubu did not campaign on you know on you know fighting corruption was not at the forefront of his campaign. But it is good that at least we have seen some element of what I would call presidential presence, mm. which on that, you know, Buari, who was said to be an anti-corruption, mm. you know, person, we, we, we did not see, you know, but let us go beyond the window dressing. There are fundamental issues. How come that public funds, 
in billions were transferred to private accounts. Who are the owners of those accounts? Mm. Why was that decision taken? Is that not in contravention of the, the public rules, the, 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 public of, the, the code of conduct for public officers? How come that these things will happen? So we cannot allow this kind of infractions to happen, and at the end of the day, it becomes a partisan conversation. Oh, that EFCC has been invited. We want to see people go to court. We want to see people arraigned. We want to see people detained. Okay. So, Mr. Ife, let me come in here. When we look at the, you know, uh, the minister's explanation that he resigned as a director, but of course, um, we still remained a shareholder in uh, the New Planet Project uh, uh, company, I believe. If you look at the federal government's financial regulation, section 713, that clearly cites uh, that there's a clear warning against the mingling of personal and public monies. Given his position and experience, and I'm even going to make uh, a reference to even better I do, who has now been suspended, um, looking, overlooking such a fundamental regulation, should that in itself be reason for suspension? Because like you said, why is he still being invited over to the president's office? This is clearly a breach in uh, financial uh, uh, regulations, in mingling of those monies. So should that be the, should that, would a, you know, suspension first be something that you would, uh, would, I would say, spark confidence in Nigerians while the investigation is going on? Look, it is not a difficult thing to ascertain, right? You've, made a, you've, made, you've asked a very sensitive question. It is not a difficult thing. The question is, is there a political will to really fight corruption? Because if the political will is there, what does it take? Simply call for the account statement of the company. Demand for the account statement. Where this close to have a billion was transferred to. Let us see it. When that money got into that account, was it moved to other accounts? Right? We call it trailing the funds. Follow the money. When this money was paid to this company, this new planet limited, was it moved to other accounts? That is the question that the EFCC should be able to answer. In 24 hours. Because it is not enough for the minister to say, oh, I had resigned as a director. When this money moved to the account, who were the Final beneficiary. Which other accounts did it move to? Have it been withdrawn since then? But the money was used, according to them, in one month to enumerate, you know, part of the 11 million households that are said to be vulnerable. Where? Which households? <laughs> I think they are just taking us for granted. Mm. I, I have not seen any. I have not. I don't know any household that has benefited for. I don't know if anyone here has knows any household. The thing, isn't I don't strange? know one household in my village, in my local government or state, that has benefited from this. I am aware that over the. I mean. Look, let's not kid ourselves. This so-called social intervention has basically become a tool for political compensation, right? Because when you have people appointed into political positions based on patronage as a way of compensating them for the role they have played in your emergence, they say that, look, it is my right to take public funds. That's the way they see it. Why will you have public funds being transferred in billions at a time that inflation is killing the country? At a time that the... That the National Security Advisor Nuhu Ribadu has said the company, that the country is bankrupt. At a time that our debt servicing is nothing to write home about. At a time that we are borrowing to service debt. We borrow to repair what we borrowed earlier. You, we are still hearing billions, hundreds of millions. These things can look like a joke, but it's not a joke. So let the president of the country come out today and say, yes, I am honest about this investigation. I am giving the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs two weeks to publish on a public platform, publicly accessible platform, all the beneficiaries of this social intervention since it, they were initiated under the Bori administration. Because well, they are public funds. If you don't do that, then we are, we are wasting our time. You are wasting our time. So this explanation by Better I Do, by the Minister of, of Interior, they are not satisfactory. Nigerians are not satisfied with it. And the other aspect is even the amount, inflation of contract. What sort of consultancy did this company offer for close to half a, a billion? What were they doing? Because if you say consultancy, I, I can sit here and give advice and just talk. That is consultancy services. It's, it, it's not, most times it is intangible. Consultancy is, most times is not something that you can lay your hands on. So what exactly were the services that were rendered for the amount. And who set this amount? Mm. Did it go through the board? Right? Who determined the amount that were paid by the Minister of Humanitarian Affairs? What was the position of the Accountant General of the Federation? 
What was the position of the Ministry of Finance? These are the questions that Nigerians must be told. But guess what? I have, an in, I have a feeling. I have a feeling that if this investigation is thorough, <laughs> Nigerians will soon realize that these two individuals, they are just the spotlight of the scandal. There are a lot of people who will be involved. You believe that's just the tip of the iceberg? Oh, yes! That is what it is! There, there are at least two companies uh, listed there which got money like the New Planet Project, but they are practically untraceable. Yes. Not just untraceable. Not just untraceable. Some of them don't even have an identity. Right? Some of them, when you take what we call, the, you check the object, what we call the object clause, when a company is incorporated, yeah. you have the memorandum and the articles of association. Yes. When you look at those documents, you are supposed to see the object clause. What was the company incorporated for? for? When you look at the purpose for which these companies were incorporated, they even have nothing to do with the contracts awarded to them. So this is a country that has made corruption a national culture. And I'm saying that that has to change. That has to change. And let us stop the dramatization. Oh. Let us stop the dramatization. Now it has been proven, it has been admitted that funds were paid to private accounts in violation of the financial regulations of the federal government. Therefore, I think that is enough for us to begin to see serious action in terms of prosecution. Because if at the end of the day, you know, President Tinobu comes back to tell us, oh, we have investigated, uh, you know, the Minister of, of Humanitarian Affairs, even though she may, she may have acted unethically, uh, blah, 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 she's therefore reinstated. You, what, so what was the whole point? I personally don't think she's going to be recalled anyway. I don't think she's going to be recalled. But what I'm saying is that, is the Minister of Interior, is it, is it the only person that has interest in a company that benefited from the largesse, from the humanitarian affairs? I think Nigerians and the media should help us look into that. Yeah. Yes. So, so that we, we, we don't go back and say, oh, one minister that has interest in a company, and that company got, which other minister? Yeah. As a country, we don't have a ministerial code of ethics. You're aware of that? We don't. Yeah. We don't have a ministerial code of ethics. In some countries, for example, in the US, the former prime minister, Boris Johnson, was removed for violating you know, ministerial code of ethics. Yeah. Matters that you can't even be prosecuted, be prosecuted for mainly ethical questions, moral requirements yeah. that you are supposed to comply with when you hold the office of a minister. Because ministerial positions are basically the machineries through which the president executes his policies, implements his programs. Yeah. So when you have ministers in, involved in corruption, the allegations of corruption, <clears throat> Again, you begin to ask, is the president really interested in developing the country? So let the president now have or constitute some technical people to draft a ministerial code of ethics. The other recommendation I want to re-emphasize is that let us begin to digitalize how we do things as a country. If we have technology, yeah. if we deploy technology, we will not even be having this conversation. Because as the contract is being awarded, it yeah. ought to be that uploaded was, on, well, on... That was precisely what Beta Edu promised. It ought to be you uploaded. You know, when she was, you know, that we would do this, we yes. would do how to enumerate. Exactly. The only reason why this has become a scandal, that the media is aware and Nigerians are aware, is because some people in the civil service may have leaked those documents. That's correct. Yes. And it might be a case of, you know, you chop, you know, give me, make a chop. So I'm going to expose you. Yeah. It looks like that is what this was about. And I, nobody can tell me that this is the only ministry that if, if investigation is done, mm. these kind of things will be uncovered. So how deep is this fraud? And this is happening a few months after the government came in. Yeah. few months. What does that tell you about the body language? What does that tell you about the perception? Leave Tunubu aside. Let's even excuse him for a second. What does that tell you about the people he has appointed, their mindset, mm. Mm. about why they are in that position? Mm -hmm. It tells you a lot that, look, our time has come. Let us eat the national cake. And I'm saying that the national cake has been depleted to a point where it has, it has become suicidal for the entire country. So this culture that once you occupy public office, you have to buy the latest vehicles, you have to build houses all over the place, you have to send your kids to schools abroad, you have to acquire assets and properties you don't even need has yeah. to stop. Yeah. This is what this is about. Half a billion can change the life of a lot of people. Mm -hmm. And we are hearing that some company was given consultancy. For what? 
I have to ask you questions like a lawyer asking another lawyer. Just very short questions because I want I want it to be clear for like the non-lawyers who are who are watching, <laughs> right? You you stated because I want to reinstate some of the things you said. First of all, even though he's not a director, the owners of a company are the shareholders of the company, yes. and he is a shareholder of the company. Yes, and his wife is the other shareholder of the company. Yes, and his wife was listed as director of the company, which means he's a beneficial owner of the company. Which means that whatever the company makes, the profit belongs to. Him as a shareholder, you can't insulate. You want what God has put together. They say no man should better. Okay, no, no. I want yes. you to be clear because no, you know, be, some some people might yes, not no, understand. Let us be serious. Yes. Let us. This yes. is a serious conversation. Yes. And you have asked a very serious question. Yes. Can you separate the husband from the wife? What is a company? What is a company? A company is a juristic person. Mm. Right? Yes, in law, we lawyers will argue that a company has a distinct entity, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Entity, yeah. It's a corporate entity, yeah. corporate soul, yes. blah, blah, blah. All those principles of law are not in doubt. But in the final analysis, there is what we call, there's a principle in corporate law called lifting the veil of incorporation. Lifting the veil of incorporation, which is when you put the name aside, you check behind. Who are the people behind this company? If your wife is a, a co shareholder of a company, and you are a shareholder, and your wife is the director of a company, can you, sit, can you tell me that you don't have interest in the company? Or that the, oh, so, oh my, what are they talking about? So, in, the, when, in their bedroom, what do they discuss? But, but are, you, I mean, are you saying, are you saying, I'm saying they should stop? That, he, he prob, that the minister probably was not aware? It's not possible. It's not? It is impossible. If it's not, I mean, I don't want to go personal, but if you are a co shareholder with your wife in a company, that has received contract of close to half a billion, and you are not aware. If you were my wife, I would file for divorce. I mean, what does that tell you? That we go on a company, and that company received contract close to half a billion, and I'm not aware. Then our marriage foundation should be questioned. That is, a, that is how serious this matter is. But I've told you that the owners of a company are the shareholders of the company. And this is a private company limited by shares. It is not a company that in Iberefio can go today and buy, and buy and become a shareholder. Mm. Right? It is a private company limited by shares. So you cannot just say, oh, I, I had resigned as a director. That is inexcusable. Mm. That is unacceptable. But I have asked the question, this contract, this consultancy contract, mm. who set the amount for it? Was it advertised? Did it go through the procurement process? What is special about this company that it had to benefit from that award, unlike the other people who companies that may have bid it? Yeah. Was there even a proper bidding? When was it done? I, I, These are the questions. Yeah. Absolutely. I want to follow up because you know we're talking about conflict of interest and we're talking about ministers. But ministers are not the only people who occupy these positions of power, right? And we have seen a lot of our lawmakers do you think that there's a conflict of interest when it comes to lawmakers putting their faces and their names on projects that are being funded by taxpayer money? I'm asking I, I this because the I, chief of staff I, I, to the president, the, the, <laughs> the, the medical facility that was named after him. Look, that's a new, that's a new, that's a, it's a new, isn't it? It's a new one. I mean, when, yes. when I look at some things when, that happen in our country, mm. I, I don't know whether to cry or to laugh. Because we have public officers who keep making a mess of, of everything. Mm. That you have a publicly funded, a publicly funded project yes. with public funds mm -hmm. while you remain a public officer being commissioned. And because you spearheaded that project, it has to be named after you. I mean, what, what, what does... To achieve what? You're talking about the hospital where nearly a quarter of a billion was paid for by the um, University of Nigeria Teaching Hospital in Enugu <laughs> to Bajabe Amela Hospital, I believe, in Lagos. Go, go to the medical college, right? Go, go to that university teaching hospital, Yes. right? Go and check their lab. Go and check their pharmacy, right? Go and check their departments. Do they have the needed facilities? What is it? What, what does that even tell you? What is the business? Why should a, 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 that kind of project be cited in Lagos by an institution in Enugu? Mm. What are they telling us? I don't understand. These are absurdities that we have normalized as a country. What is the business of Enugu University Teaching Hospital with a project in Lagos State? How was this even possible? And why is the name of the chief of staff on the, on, on the project? To achieve what? Does it belong to him? And the man is not scandalized. He's smiling about it. 
And the country has to clap for him that you have done so well. Mm. And look at the amount. A, a, a governor, a president that executes a project mm. during his tenure will find it difficult to name any project after himself. You know, it will have to be once you've left that somebody can now consider you worthy yes. of saying, you know, but this looks to me like a first, you know, that you use public funds and then, but and then you name it as such. You, you, know, you know why this is possible. Is doing it, you know why it? this sorry? is possible. It's, uh, sorry, I was saying I don't yes. think it's the first time the chief of staff is doing it because we do have the Femi <laughs> Bajabiyama residence hall. We have the Femi Bajabiyama conference center. We have, I think there's now a football field. field yes. it's, it's part it's of the, all the projects that, mm. you know, that uh, were commissioned at the same time. Yes. I mean, commendable if you look at uh, the fact that we don't, uh, all those other people who earn um, uh, constituency allowance project that we do not even know what they do with it. But then having done what you have used money for, even we do not have an idea of how much you know we're talking about, but we can see project. But then to name it after yourself while you're still in office. The problem is that we have a culture of what I call canonization of criminality. Do you know how many institutions in Nigeria are named after the late Sani Abacha? With all the money you stole from the country that have been recovered. Mm. Institutions are still named after Abacha. Nobody sees anything wrong in it. All the former heads of states who ruined this country, we still have public institutions named after them. That is how low we have condition. That is how low we have sunk. And the whole national and the other aspect is the national award thing. Once you become a governor, you have to be a CON. We need to revisit our laws too. Yeah. It should not be automatic, yeah. right? Once they are minister, a, a certain street has to be named after you. So what that tells you is that as a country, we don't really have a moral foundation. Because if you have someone that really wants to change Nigeria, from the day you are sworn in, one of the things you have to do, but in fact, start from the FCT. Start from the FCT. Rename all the streets, all the roads that are named after, have been named after people that are not deserving. That is why the, yeah. the chief of staff to the president can do this. Because there is nothing wrong in it. You are still the chief of staff. Do you know who the chief of staff to the president is? <laughs> that you have a project oh, yeah. named after him, a project that he was involved in. So he is saying that, I brought this, I influenced the bringing of this project. Yes. Therefore, you have to honor me for it. Mm. That is okay. what you say. Let me circle back, because of time, we're running out of time. Let me circle back to the issue of the conflict of interest. And um, um, I, I think a similar thing happened during um, at, at the earlier part of the Buhari administration when uh, Babache Lawa, you know, the yes. contract and everything, it consumed him, yeah. you know, ultimately. The grass, uh, the grass, the grass cutter. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> What do you think will be going on in the mind of the president, Ashwaji Bolame Tinubu now, in terms of what to do, and not just with Bita Idu, which, like you said, it, 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 it would be surprising to have her back, uh, but for uh, Anulubu Miyujo, will the president be thinking, this is a shining star, uh, I've used, you know, I mean, it's like a PR machine for my administration, or will he go back and drill down, as other people have said, to... Uh, the expanded Olubemi Ojo, who, as you know, um, had issues of the NYC thing that it, it turned out like that the same time that he was serving as member of the House of Reps was the same time that he claimed that he finished his youth service against extant laws of the country. Or the Olubemi Ojo that was the chair of the committee for the NDDC yeah, and of the your of your mic circle. Yeah. Do you think that those things will be playing in the president's mind and say, should I play to the gallery and say, this is a shining star, let's retain him? Or but then to say that, hey, doesn't look like he's as squeaky clean mm. as he's been presented to the people. I think the mistake with your question, sir, with due respect, <laughs> is that, he, is that the, the, the problem, the premise of your question is that Tunubu doesn't want to work with corrupt people. And I don't agree with you. Because I'm not, I'm not speaking particularly about it. But let us not live here with the mindset that this president does not want corrupt people around him. I, I would not agree with that. Because how did he get there? Who were the people who funded the election? Who were the people who supported him? And look at the number of ministers that we have. Is it not scandalous? If, if Tunubu is serious about changing the country, let him start by reducing the number of ministers. You have a minister today who is current, collecting Alawi, right? Musawe. And, and you have a saving core member. And that's to Musawa. You have a, Tunubu has shown Nigeria that he does not care about fighting corruption. You have a saving core member in violation of the decision of the Supreme Court that while you are a member of the youth, National Youth Corps, you cannot hold a public office. Yeah. 
You have a minister that is still wearing khaki to go for CDS and still sit in the Federal Executive Council. Is, is that? Khaki, yes. <laughs> are, are we a serious country? Are we a serious country? Yeah, but they say that she might not be collecting a la oui, that no, It doesn't know. matter. Mm. She's not the only one who is not collecting. We know the, the rot in the NYC. We have ghost core members, people who have never been to their PPA, place of primary assignment. Right? They just sit somewhere, somebody. We know these things. It doesn't matter. But I'm saying that when you look at the bigger picture, mm. this is only a problem because it has been exposed. I don't think this is a problem for the president because it actually happened. I think this is just a face saving thing. But I, I don't see him firing, you know, the minister. I don't, I, don't, I, don't see, I don't see that happening. You happen. think he will survive it? I, th I think he will survive it. What would but but at a minimum, mm. what I expect the president to do. Because you know, you must also concede to him, he has done commendable things trying to reform Correct. Mm -hmm. how we get passports. I yeah. mean, I like some of the things he has said. Yeah. You know, he sounds like someone that has a lot of things upstairs to yeah. offer that. the country. Yeah. So I think the president will be in a dilemma. Mm. But I'm saying at a minimum, revoke the contract that was given to that company. Let the company, the money return to public posts. Mm. And now come up with a policy that if you're a minister under my government, any company that you have interest, whether as a, as a former director or as a shareholder, will not benefit from award, will not benefit from contracts. Yeah. Can the president have the well, does this president have the courage to do that? Because if he says that, he that, knows that he, will be, he will be stating the obvious because that's what the law says. Yes, but I'm saying, does he have the intention of doing that? <laughs> right? Does he have the courage to do that? Yeah. Does this president really want to fight corruption? Right? Because you have people who have been accused of corruption that he has appointed as a minister from the legislative arm to the executive arm to even the political party, the APC. People that should be standing trial, people with ongoing active corruption cases with the EFCC. Do you really believe Tinubu wants to fight corruption? I think the coming months will tell. Yeah. The coming months will tell. Yes. Yes, we've run out of time. I just quickly want to ask you what you think when we look at the systemic corruption within the Humanitarian Affairs Ministry, now with Beta Adu, and of course with Sadia Umafaruk, should that ministry be scrapped? What is the purpose of the you ministry? Really what, the I mean, what is the, I mean, send, send out to the, you know, IDP, how many people have they taken out of the IDP? Mm. They say they want to alleviate poverty, but the country is getting poorer. A humanitarian affairs ministry or a poverty alleviation ministry that has only imposed more poverty on the country should be scrapped. So not only should the president not return her, I am saying this morning that I do not see why we need that ministry. We have the National Disaster Management Agency also. All right. mm. So why do we need a Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs? All right, then what is the humanitarian services that they are renting to the country? <laughs> I haven't seen it. Scrap the ministry. Mr. F. Young, thank you so much. Uh, I knew when you were coming, you were coming with the fire. <laughs> thank you. We really enjoyed the, to, today's interview.